In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because GT Ford Man asks us, how do they get the little M's on the M&M's? Ever wonder how each M&M is marked with that signature white M? Well, want to know more? The production of the candy that melts in your mouth and not in your hand includes many different steps. First, the chocolate concoction is made and then poured into small round molds to form the cores of the M&Ms. These chocolatey centers are then tumbled to create smooth circular surfaces, which will then be screened out and covered with a colorful liquid coating. Once the exterior liquid is added, more tumbling, and then dried to form the hard shell, each candy piece ends up held in an indentation on a conveyor belt that whisks them away to be stamped with the signature M. The actual process for applying each M is similar to the offset printing process. So, well, how does this work? In a nutshell, offset printing is widely used to produce high-quality images on a variety of materials such as paper, canvas, or in this case, candy. Essentially, this type of printing means that rather than having an image directly stamped onto a piece of material, the image is transferred or offset to an intermediate surface first. The first step in offset printing includes inking an original image onto metal plates. The image from the plates is then transferred to a rubber cylinder known as a blanket, which acts as an intermediary between the metal plates and the final printing surface. The final step includes offsetting the original image from the blanket to the desired printing surface. The intermediary rubber blanket is particularly needed in the case of M&Ms, which are relatively fragile and rounded. By careful design and calibration of the press, the rubber blanket only presses against the candy just enough to transfer the M without damaging the outer shell of the M&M. This printing method also significantly reduces the wear on the master metal plates so they last much longer. This is good considering, on average, around 2 billion M&Ms are branded with an M every 8 hours. Of course, with this type of volume, it is nearly impossible to ensure each candy piece is perfectly shaped, particularly with peanut M&Ms, which are not particularly uniform. As a result, despite careful calibration, some M&Ms do make it through the production process without an M. However, these are not considered rejects by any means. Rather than risk cracking the hard outer shell, the printing machine is designed to let overly misshaped M&Ms pass through without being stamped. In other words, the lack of an M on an M&M candy is totally intentional. Waste not one. Not and all that. Plus, I think we can all agree that a double peanutted M&M, which will likely not have an M, is absolutely worth saving. And now for some bonus facts. Ever wondered what nougat is? Well, wonder no more. There are three main types of nougat: white nougat, brown nougat, and German nougat. White nougat is made primarily from whipping egg whites, sugar, nuts (usually almonds, pistachios, or hazelnuts) and honey together. Brown nougat is made in a very similar fashion as white nougat, except generally without the egg whites. And brown nougat usually uses caramelized sugar, making it a lot thicker than white nougat. Finally, German nougat, also known as Viennese nougat, is generally made with only sugar, chocolate, and almonds. That said, the nougat in candy bars is typically made with cheaper substitute ingredients, such as aerated hydrolyzed soy protein or gelatin, instead of egg whites and corn syrup and the like. And if you're wondering, the word nougat is French and comes from the old provincial word nougat, meaning nut cake. This in turn derives from the Latin nux, meaning nut. Speaking of nougat, the Snickers candy bar was the second candy bar sold by Mars Inc. The first was the Milky Way, which was officially thought up by Frank Mars's son, Forrest Mars, who had the idea of trying to create a candy that was, to quote, chocolate malted milk in a candy bar. The idea for the Snickers bar, named after one of Frank Mars's horses, came from an already existing snack that was made up of nougat, peanut, and caramel. Frank Mars added chocolate, put it in candy bar form, and started selling it wholesale. The Snickers bar quickly rose to become one of the world's most popular candy bars and has sustained that to this day. Annual sales of Snickers bars today total over $2 billion. And now for another bonus fact. Speaking of copying ideas for profit, the M&M was modeled after a candy Forrest Mars Sr. encountered while in Spain during the 1930s. During the Spanish Civil War there, he observed soldiers eating chocolate pellets with a hard shell of tempered chocolate. This prevented the candies from melting, which was essential when included in soldiers' rations as they were. On that note, during World War II, production of M&Ms skyrocketed due to the fact that they were sold to the military and included as part of United States' soldiers' rations. And now for another bonus fact. 
Going back to peanut goodness and some of the most popular candies in the world, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups were created by a man named Harry Burnett Reese, who was seeking a way to help support his 16 children. Yep, 16. In any event, in 1917, Reese, having previously worked a variety of odd jobs, found an advertisement to work on a dairy farm owned by Milton S. Hershey, owner of the Hershey Chocolate Company in Hershey, Pennsylvania. He worked on the farm for several years and later began working in the company's chocolate factory, where he became inspired by Hershey and set out to make his own chocolates as a way to help support his family with a little extra money on the side. Towards this end, he started creating confections in his basement, naming bars and candies after his many children. In the 1920s, Reese's basement-born enterprise was doing much better than expected, with the candies selling successfully to the local market. He thus decided to take the business even more seriously and set up the H.B. Reese Candy Company. In 1928, Reese also started selling chocolate and peanut butter confections that he simply called peanut butter cups or penny cups, as they cost just one penny each at the time. These were his biggest hit. Ultimately, his business kept growing, and he even built a 100,000-square-foot factory on Chocolate Avenue in Hershey, Pennsylvania, making a wide assortment of candies, including raisin clusters and chocolate-covered dates. However, during World War II, Reese was forced to abandon many of his other projects and chose to focus on his best-selling product, his peanut butter cups. Sales continued to grow from there. Reese died unexpectedly of a heart attack in 1956, just a few days before his 77th birthday. Seven years later, in 1963, Reese's sons decided to merge their company with Hershey's, a deal which today, a little over half a century later, has the Reese descendants' stake in Hershey's valued at about $2.5 billion with annual dividends of about $50 million. As for Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, it's one of the best-selling candies in the world, despite almost being non-existent in much of the world. But the annual sales in the US of about $2.6 billion nonetheless put it near the top of the worldwide candy list. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Also, why not check out another channel I do called Geographics? It's all about geography, obviously. I'll link to that below. And thank you for watching.